to make music with you, to let our lives be a song, to let our song be the rose that we give to the world. Um, you're beautiful people and I love you and I thank you for, for being with me and letting me be with you. Thank you. Okay, it's kind of hilarious that I'm using my iPad to talk because normally I'd have it all printed out, but I don't have a printer right now. And your phone didn't and work? No, it, the battery died. That's hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I knew Nick before I actually met Nick, because my office is right next to the piano practice room, and to hear Nick is to know Nick, <laughs> or at least to get a pretty good introduction to him. I think I've known Nick for 10 years. I looked at your transcript yesterday. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Just thought I'd I, I, well, I mess that up. Okay. And, um, you know, it's legal, I'm allowed to do that. Um, and, and if it had occurred to me that I'd have to do this one day, I think I would have saved some text messages, uh, maybe some programs, taken a few notes along the way. Um, I remember certain milestone events, but uh, not dates, and maybe not even the order in which they really happened. Every time I get asked about something that happened at this church, I'm like, yeah, that happened, I don't know when. You know, that's pretty much my answer. I am not a historian. Artist, not historian. Okay, so Nick stuck out in the group of piano students. Um, come on, look at it. Um, the piano students all hang out in the hallway uh, near the practice, their practice rooms and their lockers, which is right outside my office door. And in those days, I, I felt compelled to leave my office door open because I had an administrative role. I no longer have to do that. I'm keeping it shut. But um, that's a whole other story. Um, I, I could always hear Nick. He was clearly the ringleader of the of the students. You know, if they had food, he was the one organizing it. Um, and they always seemed to have food outside of my office door. Um, but um, you know, he he was always the one who was the encouraging word for his fellow students. So when the UUCO needed a new pianist, I gave Nick Beth's contact info and suggested he audition. I kind of left it at that. I mean, I, I, yeah, I think he might have said, well, what, what kind of church? And, and oh, wait a minute, i got to tell you the pay church story. <laughs> so I didn't write this one down. So, so a couple of years ago, one of my students uh, was complaining about not being able to draw. And I said, of course you can draw. I said, I can't sing, I, I, but I sing on Sunday. And they said, oh. Do you see that pay church Nick plays at? And I said, what? And, and, and of course, we're in the middle of class, so I, I can't really have this conversation in class. And I said, OK, yes, we pay the people who work for us. That's the end of this discussion. We'll talk later. But I mean, seriously, that was, that was how it got. I don't know what Nick said to students, but that's how it got back to me, pay church. <laughs> I, 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 I call it pay church because in my own church, I have never been paid to make music. So right. I got a paycheck. Once a month, so it was pay church. <laughs> I'm actually really proud we pay the professionals in our church, by the way. Yeah. So, but at the time that I asked Nick to audition, to be honest, I had no idea how well he could play. You know, I'm an artist, not a pianist. Um, so I just figured Beth would know, you know, so send him to Beth. And, um, but I just had a feeling he would fit in here and that we were his people. And uh, I think I was right, he's been in quite well. <laughs> so, I want to tell you a story about a change in our relationship, and I think it really changed in 2010. You know, I knew Nick, he flitted around my office area, and, uh, sorry, I flitted, I used that word. Um, but I was asked to direct Sister Dottie Estickson's Holiday Extravaganza, <laughs> the fundraiser for outreach. And one of the first things I did after I got coerced into doing this was hire Nick to accompany the event. We agreed on a fee, and as I told the, the outreach board, you have to spend money to make money. And, um, and, and Nick, Nick was quite a hit at that uh, event. But um, I, as I recall, he actually donated at least half of his fee back to outreach. Bravo. Yeah. The next year, he just flat out volunteered. That's the point. And that's when I began to realize what this might mean to Nick. 
One of the publicity events we came up with the second year was a singing competition on an early morning radio show out of Salt Lake, and I asked Nick to participate, to sing live on the radio. It never occurred to me that by doing so, he would be publicly outing himself. He sent me a long text message, one of the ones I wish I still had, and um, all about how this would change everything. I don't know if it actually did change everything, but I know it was a very brave act. But, you know, speaking of acts, have you seen Nick's one-man show? Yes. Okay. The, the monologues where he has continued to publicly out himself. Um, and, and he must let us all know when he wants to tell his story on stage again. Okay. okay. So Nick and I have created several Sunday services together. Um, and one of my favorites was the musical theater songs of equality and inclusion. That, that was back in the days when Dan made sure I named everything early. So I, it was like, I think we named it before we picked the songs. Um, we picked all the songs together from the prelude of Seasons of Love to Rent to Somewhere from West Side Story, carefully taught from South Pacific, and Do You Hear the People Sing from Les Miserables. I had the easier part writing the connecting threads. Nick had to learn the music and schedule time with our guest singers so they could rehearse. Now, saying yes is somewhat downplaying their significance. My alums and friends, two of whom are actually here, John Bishop and Taylor Knuth, Emily Starr and, and Alicia Washington, people who like Nick rarely say no. Maybe they just don't say no to me. <laughs> okay. okay, random information about Nick. His laugh is infectious, and it's louder than mine. <laughs> He's a wonderful cat, house and cat sitter, if you need him. He posts lovely photos of Cash Valley on Instagram and occasionally weird pictures of himself in the mirror. <laughs> um, I stopped doing that. Yeah, that's probably an <laughs> okay. But, the, but you, know, it's, you know, follow him on Instagram. Um, he loves to procrastinate until he can't. Dot, dot, dot. Yeah. And he is one of the few people I've ever met that can actually use the word darling and mean it. <laughs> I wanted Nick to have a little piece of the UCO with him. I thought I might make a cake for his pony, <laughs> but I, need, I would have needed a fitting, and I decided I don't have one. So um, instead, I made a small bag from fabric that we use in the sanctuary. It's on lots of our pieces up here. Um, and I filled it with lavender, so that when you need to fill us around you, you just have to take a whiff. I know that Nick will continue to be in my life. <laughs> Mine's handwritten, I didn't do that, I have <laughs> The first time that I had to collaborate with Nick on a service, I was absolutely terrified. Here was a UUCO legend. He is brilliant, joyful, talented beyond anything I had ever seen in a church before, professional, and he's Nick, and I was me. I was absolutely terrified. But collaborate we did, over coffee, in faith, and with my trembling hands. It was Nick's service, and I was his worship, worship associate. He spoke of his relationship with music. We wept in the pews. His voice soared, soared through the sanctuary, and our hearts soared alongside. His legend status was already well-deserved, and his sermon that Sunday reinforced it tenfold. In this process of collaboration, I learned something that I've never forgotten. Nick is also a really good man. His heart is as wide and deep as his smile, his words are genuine, and his friendship is real. His love extends to us all, every one of us in these pews. His joy resonates through our walls, today and all days. All that Nick is will always stay with us. We bid farewell today to an incredible music director, but even more importantly, we are bidding farewell to a good man. May our love follow you in all the days ahead. You're from a tradition where people bless each other. 
and it's usually um, a patriarchal role. But this is Unitarian Universalism. <laughs> and so I'd like to bless you today in our own unique way. May I, may I take your hands? Nick Maughan. May the blessings, oh my goodness, I get myself together here. May the blessings of your gift of music serve you well throughout your entire life. May it continue to fill your soul with joy and meaning. May everyone who is a student of yours, a collaborator of yours, a creative partner in whatever way, be touched by your gift, not only of musicality, but of creativity, true collaborative spirit, and deep heart and deep hearty laughter <laughs> along the way. We've had so many days of laughing together as we've planned worship together. And so I offer the blessings of this entire congregation, entire congregation, that you thrive in your musical career, that you know that you are always surrounded by love because you are, and that your health and body, mind, and spirit all together continues to thrive to support the wonderful gifts that you have to offer the world. And by the way, I want tickets to the Tony Awards. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have an eye with you. That's right. That's right. So just keep that in mind. When that happens, I'm counting on the ticket. Yes. And a few others. <laughs> Seriously, we bless you with all our hearts. And we thank you. Thank you for all that you've given us. The gift is beyond that that's bequeathed to you last year, and that you are returning to us, and we will be sure that it is given to the new music director when that person magically appears <laughs> out of somewhere in the universe. And we'll know that it comes to that person imbued with the time you've spent here among us with every musical note not only in the stool, but in our hearts. Love you. Love you too.